So hi everyone, uh, my name's Lauren. I'm a systems engineer here at AGI, and today I'm going to walk us through a space systems demo. Um, it's going to highlight a lot of different things that you can do on the space side of analysis with STK. You can access this demo yourself um, by just going to um, open a new scenario in SDK and going to the agi.com scenario side here on the left, um, which is actually accessing the SDK Data Federate, which is a storing site for SDK scenarios and other SDK data. And under the SDK 11 application areas, this is the space systems demo. Um, I already have it open, so I'll just cancel out of that, but this is for your reference to find it later if you wanna follow along. It also opens up with a great little HTML page um, that will also walk you through some of the things that I'm going to cover in this demo. So starting here in my 3D window, um, I have a constellation of satellites. There are four critically inclined satellites shown in the green orbits and three uh, LEO orbits and an equatorial orbit um, shown in white. Um, so I've got a total of seven satellites here with the mission of providing um, you know, space surveillance of the LEO out to GEO region, so the MEO region, medium um, Earth orbit region. And I'm going to look at a few different ways uh, that I can quantify how well this constellation of satellites is actually doing at covering that region of space. The first thing I'll look at is a tool in SDK called Volumetric. Um, I have it down here as a volumetric object. And if I just go ahead and play my scenario, I will see the sensor sweeping out regions of space and that will start to color in um, according to the contour that's in my top left here, which is showing the coverage time in hours. Um, so anything that's red to yellow has been covered from zero to about 0.1 hours. Um, and we're just accumulating that coverage time here over the 24 hour interval. I can navigate around this. So it's um, a full 3D look at the region of space that these satellites are responsible for um, sensing or imaging. And you can start to see the planes um, that those satellites are in really getting colored um, by this analysis. I'll jump us through towards the end and pause. And now you can see um, the regions of space that uh, received the most coverage are up to two and a half hours of accumulated coverage time and that's really in this equatorial uh, region, uh, but there's a few other points around as well. Uh, this is just a really um, compelling image to let you know um, sort of how well these satellites are doing at sensing that region of space. Uh, we're just using generic sensors right now, uh, but those could be replaced with actual instruments like your um, EOIR sensor or receivers and transmitters and radar systems, just depending on what the actual mission of the satellite is. Um, right now, the generic sensor sort of covers all of those things, and then you can add fidelity on top of that. So that's the full 3D picture. Um, we also have a way of doing a similar analysis in a more two-dimensional sense using what we call coverage in SDK. Uh, coverage is often used like on the surface of the Earth or another planet. Uh, this is a very cool example of how coverage can actually be defined at altitude. Um, in this case, it's using the geo altitude. So now we're specifically looking at how well these seven satellites um, are able to image the geo region, which we know is a very important region of space for our satellite missions. Again, this is a dynamic representation. So if I play my scenario, I can see those sensors sweeping in and out of the geo region. In this case, we're looking at a different contour um, plot of the data from red to blue. It's going from data that is more recent. So um, hot data is in red. And then in blue, this is the colder data, places that haven't been seen recently. So in this case, the red is actually good. The blue is less desirable. So these are great visuals. Um, all of this stuff can be reported on as well. And we actually have a couple of quick reports here. Um, so here's a report of the geo belt coverage. So this is showing that at any given time within my 24 hours, I'm getting, I don't know, around 4%, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more, somewhere between three and 6% of my geo belt region at a snapshot in time is covered by those sensors. 
But if you look at the accumulated coverage shown here in blue, by the end of my 24 hours, I'm actually able to uh, visualize and see almost 90% of my GeoBelt region. Um, so those are some great statistics there of your mission effectiveness of that satellite constellation. I'll turn off those graphics. So one of the next things that this scenario will walk us through is conjunction analysis. Um, in this case, we have an ATV uh, vehicle that's actually on a resupply mission to the International Space Station. So it's plotted right now in a relative frame to the ISS, which is why we're seeing these kind of loops, see loops of the, um, the trajectory here rather than what we would normally think of as an orbit. So here we've used um, our advanced CAT tool, which um, is our advanced conjunction analysis tool uh, to look at our primary vehicle of interest um, and compare its position to our catalog of space objects and see when it will come within close proximity to other objects. And you might need to plan a collision avoidance maneuver um, or something along those lines. So in this case, this is one of the times that it's coming close um, to, in this case, um, I think it's just a rocket body here or a piece of debris. Um, that's often what we are worried about with collisions, not other operating functional satellites, um, but debris, decayed, um, decayed and no longer functioning satellites. Uh, rocket bodies, things like that. Um, so you can see right now that they're far enough apart and everything is is green. But if I play my scenario, as they come within close approach, their um, ellipsoids turn yellow. And then as they get outside of my threshold of close approach, they turn back to green. Um, so lots of great analysis that we can do here. Um, to ensure kind of mission safety um, of our objects of interest, again, against the catalog of known space objects. Skipping into the next section, I showed you some covariance ellipsoids in that previous one. Um, in, those, in that case, the source of those, um, we kind of just put fixed covariance data on that. But now I'm actually showing you covariance data for a vehicle um, that was simulated from our orbit determination toolkit. Um, so ODTK, our orbit determination toolkit, is used to process um, measurement data and come up with the best estimate of your satellite location um, and the uncertainty in that location. It can also simulate any of the data um, types that it can uh, actually process. So in this case, this is simulated data, um, and we used our um, those previous four critically inclined satellites um, as some of the space-based assets for tracking the satellite. And then we also, so I'll go back to a more zoomed out view. We've also got a few ground stations in place. So we've got four different ground stations in North America here um, that are providing ground-based measurements for this orbit, orbit determination example. And we're actually able to compare the type of orbit uncertainty that we would get from these different types of measurement data. So in red, we have the um, uncertainty or error ellipsoid that we get from just ground-based measurements alone. In orange, we see the results of our uncertainty from space-based measurements alone. Now, the reason that there's such a big difference in those isn't necessarily that the space-based measurements are better than the ground-based measurements. It's actually just due to the, um, the visibility and the number of passes that we're able to get um, from one measurement type versus the other. So I'll pull up this quick little report here. Um, this is just showing my access intervals for my space-based assets, those four critically inclined satellites versus my ground-based assets. And you can see that I am able to get data um, earlier on in my analysis period from the satellites than I am from the ground stations. And I'm getting more frequent and longer passes of data from the space-based assets. So more measurements, more data, more frequent data, all of that contributes to a smaller um, covariance or uncertainty in my satellite, which is why back here in my 3D view, the orange ellipsoid from space-based measurements is so much smaller than the red. Now, finally, I have this green ellipsoid here, and that's actually the ellipsoid of uncertainty that would result if I had both space-based and ground-based data. 
Um, the great thing about this is that you might have mission requirements on the type of uncertainty that you are um, able to withstand for your mission. And you can use a tool like ODTK and STK to simulate um, before your mission even flies uh, the type of measurements you'll get, the frequency of those measurements, the um, types of measurements between ground and space and other assets, and make you know, more informed mission decisions about what you'll actually need to support your mission going forward. All right, so let's move on to the last part of this scenario, which is the actual um, docking, um, rendezvous and docking of um, this resupply vehicle with the International Space Station. So this mission here um, was all designed using SDK's Astrogator. So Astrogator is a maneuver planning and mission planning tool um, within SDK um, for more kind of complex satellite missions. You can use it to do geostation keeping, um, interplanetary trajectories, all sorts of stuff like that. In this case, um, this whole sequence was built to allow this resupply vehicle to approach the International Space Station um, and rendezvous with it. So that's all been already configured and we can just play out and see the burns that take place there and look at that rendezvous. All right. So this is a great scenario. This is one that I love to um, reference a lot. It's a great starting point for um, several different types of space-based analysis. Um, so please feel free to look it up, um, again, from going to File and Open and going to your AGI.com scenarios to pull that down and start digging through it yourself um, so that you can learn more about it um, and reference this guide as well.